Okay, welcome back. So let's look at a historical example to kind of tie all these ideas together about sampling. All right. So there was a, a magazine back in 1936 that had correctly predicted elections a few in a row, and then they came to the 1936 election. They mailed it to 10 million people, and here's where they got their sampling frame. What did the results look like? Well, they got that many back. They predicted this guy, Alf Landon, would win and win pretty big. But actually, nobody's heard of Alf Landon, so I think you know what happened here. FDR, Franklin Roosevelt, won, and he won really big. Right? That was actually the largest win in presidential election history. Okay, so what happened here? How did they get it so wrong? What, where do we see bias? Measurement bias, sampling bias, what was going on? Well, the population was everybody, all voters in the United States. What were the issues here? I think we had a pretty biased sampling frame. right? If you'll notice about our sampling frame, telephone directories, country club memberships, automobile registrations. In 1936, Right, people that had a phone, belonged to a country club, and had a car were, were probably a pretty select group. Right? That maybe a select similar group that felt a certain way. Right? It was voluntary response. And they actually had a lot of non-response. And maybe you're thinking 2.3 million is a lot of responses. And yes, it is. But you know, maybe if they were wanting 10 million, right, 2.3 isn't really as much to work with as they had hoped for. Right? That same year, George Gallup started implementing some of these ideas of simple random sampling and predicted almost on the nose that Roosevelt would win really big with a very small sample size of 50,000. Okay, so when so again when we're thinking about sampling, we use a lot of these examples to kind of show how not to do it, right? Cuz you're never going to have the perfect sample. But we kind of look at these examples to show how not to do. So let's consider a situation here to kind of tie together all these different types of sampling. Okay, so suppose we have 40 people in a class, and we want a sample of 10 of them. All right, so what would be an example of using some sort of systematic sample? So maybe you can think of one here for a second. All right, so if I've got a sampling frame of all 40 students, a class roster, if I just went down this list and picked every fourth student, that would be one way of incorporating randomization into my sample. All right, so that'd be one way of going about it. Maybe we wouldn't give a perfect one. What if I want to make sure all different majors in the class are equally represented? Okay, then maybe I could use some element of stratified sampling. Okay, so we send out a poll. There's five majors in our class. So if I then randomly choose two people from each major, right, that would give me a stratified sample. Now maybe you're thinking, okay, well, is that fair? What if there's more people in the class that are one major versus another? Right? Sometimes you can adjust. If, if you see proportions in the population, if you know what proportion each group represents in the population, Sometimes you can adjust your size of each strata to mirror the actual population. Right? So say there were more um, there were more accounting majors in the class. If there were like 30 of them, right? That's 75% of the uh, of the population. Then I would want 75% of my sample to come from accounting majors. Right? But that's the idea of stratified sampling. Cluster sampling. Well, a quick, easy way of doing a cluster sample. Say there's, um, I want a sample of size 10, 40 students. Maybe there's four rows in the class. Just grab one of those rows and hope it's a good representative sample. All right, but again, so some other bad ways of doing it. That, that doesn't sound like a great way in this case of cluster sampling. Might not be a great idea in this case. All right, some other ways that aren't a great idea. Now notice we're, we're looking for views on attendance policy. Let's think about what convenient sampling would look like. 
what if it was a Monday, Wednesday, Friday class? And I polled the 10 people that sat in the front of the class on Friday about attendance policies. All right? I think you'd get a much different result than if you did some sort of better sampling. Okay, remember the gold standard is simple random sampling. Okay, so how would I do a simple random sample here? I would have to think about every single potential sample from n equal to 40, right? big N equal to 40. How many different samples of size 10 could I take from that? It'd be a lot. Right? Then consider all those and randomly choose them. Now the number of, of potential samples there would be so big that I would argue it's, it's not possible for a human to do that. Right? We would have to leave it up to a computer. So maybe you're saying, yes, simple random sampling is nice. Right? We would like to be able to get here, but it's not always realistic. So sometimes we have to go with other ways of doing things. All right, so thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.